Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you. You know, I was thinking back uh, a little bit of my history here with this church. Uh, this is my first time to stand before you and do what I'm going to do here this morning. So please pray for me again. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, again, I always like to thank the people that participate on the platform here. Karen, thanks for the announcements and bringing us that opening greeting here. Diana, the children's story. Uh, Kevin and Michelle, father and daughter that got drafted. Michelle, thank you for having the, the prayer this morning and especially remembering me. And Mary, where's Mary? Our organist. You know, we never thank our organist. Can we give her a little applause here this morning? Okay, now, I first have to apologize again to this group. I know that there were a lot of you that came here thinking that Pastor Velotti, after vacation and GC session, he'd be back in this pulpit. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to wait another week before that happens. But we do wanna thank Pastor Velotti for coming back and his sister-in-law, Esther, is here. So yes, Esther is here representing the family as the uh, Rinchenko family is all sick. And Velotti has decided to bring that upon us here today. So thank you for being, yes, really. <laughs> But anyway, the apologies are for that, and uh, I just pray that I can fill his shoes this morning. Yes, Mary. Oh, yes, Maida, how did I forget you? Thank you for a rousing song service. I know you hadn't done that in a while, but thank you very much for doing that also for us. And for those of you who saw my name on the website or in the bulletin and thought, what? Well, I'm along with you on that thought. Um, Steve Hansen preaching. Got to be there for that or I, I scared a lot of people away. So thank you very much for those of you that brave this morning to come hear this message. You know, I, as I've stood here before many a time and have done a prayer request or collected the offering or had a prayer for the offering, uh, participated in some of your family funerals, uh, helping with communion, you know, it's been a privilege to represent this church in those capacities. But to stand before you for another 30 minutes may be a challenge for me, but uh, bear with me. Gail and I have been here as members for almost 35 years. That's hard for me to believe. Some of you, I was here before you, and some of you were here before I came. So anyway, we're a family, and that's what I like about this church. Amen. I'm humbled at the privilege to stand before you this morning. I do pray that the Lord's going to bless this message and that it comes from my mouth like I wrote it, not like I think I will probably say this. But uh, before we start, I'd like to have a short prayer here this morning and just ask that uh, the Lord bless this service. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this family that's gathered here today. I ask for your your blessing upon the words that I will speak today, that they honor you and glorify your name. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before you leave here today, my, my hope is that you will leave here with these thoughts. Number one, a thought of how much Jesus loves each one of us. Number two, how much each one of us has a role to play in proclaiming the gospel message. And that, number three, we need to be unified. To share that love within ourselves and then share that love out into the community. I guess I'm filled with uh, apologies here this morning because I know a few of you went to the GC session. And you may have heard on the very first Sabbath, our newly elected but returning to the position, GT Ng, the secretary, of the General Conference tell a story when he was preaching. And I just thought it was so fitting, I'm gonna try and duplicate that story, so bear with me. The story is told of a prime minister who was invited to visit the President of the United States. That President was Bill Clinton. Unfortunately though, this prime minister couldn't speak or understand English. He was naturally uneasy to pay an, a, a, an official visit to the United States without the capacity to understand or speak English, 
But without panic, his staff put together a plan. There's nothing to worry about, Mr. Prime Minister, we can help. When Americans greet each other, their common greeting is, how are you? For in the United States, that is the standard greeting, whether they mean it or not. And after that response, the president would most likely say, I'm fine, and you? And then your response, Mr. Prime Minister, would be, me too. So over and over again, now the Prime Minister started repeating this greeting. How are you? Me too. How are you? Me too. Well, the Prime Minister started gaining confidence and felt that he was prepared now for the meeting. Upon arrival at the White House, the Prime Minister is taken back by the powerful and stately influence that he sees from Mr. Clinton, Mr. Clinton and gets nervous. So instead of saying, how are you? He said, who are you? <laughs> President Clinton is taken back by that response and thinking this is a prime minister who doesn't even know who I am. But after regaining his composure and not wanting to embarrass the prime minister, President Clinton offers this. Hello, I'm Bill Clinton, husband of Hillary. And you? And the prime minister responds, me too. <laughs> If I were to ask you today, who are you? What would your response be? Some of you would probably say, well, I'm so-and-so. I work for so-and-so. I've been married to so-and-so. I have so many children, etc." But then if I asked you, who are you at the Willowbrook Church? Some of you would probably respond, I'm an elder, I'm a deacon, I'm a Sabbath school leader, I'm a fellowship dinner coordinator. By the way, there is a fellowship dinner after this. So those, I hope you brought your appetites. Each person adds to the whole ministry of our church. No one can do it all. We can't expect Pastor Velotti to do it all. Now, this wasn't supposed to be an announcement for the large committee preparing for the nominating committee, but each one of us needs to be prayerfully considering right now when that telephone rings or that we're invited to be part of the fellowship and family of this Wilbur Church and take an office. If I was to say, who are you in the workplace or around your friends? Do those around you see something special in the way you deal with circumstances or the attitude that you portray at work? Would they ever ask you about your church? Would they ask you about your beliefs? Would they see something special in you that they would want to know more about you? I'd like to show you a video that uh, I saw that reminded me of what it is to be an Adventist. Real quick, there's a, a video here. In, in this video, I'm going to be see. discussing the four C's of Adventism, which are fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The four C's of Adventism. The first C stands for Christ. We believe in Christ, Jesus Christ. We believe that He is God and that he came to this earth to show us what God was like and to die on the cross for our sins so that one day we may be in heaven with him. The second C is the cross. Well, we believe in the cross and we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we may have salvation which we receive through faith not by anything that we do like keeping the commandments. The third C is for the commandments. We believe in the Ten Commandments, and we believe we should keep the commandments, not in order to be saved, but because we have been saved, and it is our way to show our love and appreciation for Jesus and His sacrifice for us. 
In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And the fourth C stands for Jesus is soon coming. We believe that Jesus is coming again soon. And that's why we feel that it is important to believe in Christ, believe in the cross, and keep His commandments. So number one, we believe in Jesus Christ, our God, who came to this earth and gave us the opportunity of everlasting life. C for Christ. Second, the cross. Jesus died for us and our sins to give us salvation through faith. The cross. Number three, the commandments. We keep the commandments of Seventh-day Adventists and honor the fourth. Remember John 14, 15, Jesus tells us, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the fourth, coming. Jesus is coming again, and he, belong, and he longs to take us home for eternity. Christ, cross, commandments, and coming. When somebody asks you a little bit about what you believe, those four things are very simple. Christ, Amen. cross, commandments, coming. Good starting place for any conversation. As I see this, we Willowbrook members have an obligation to our community. This church has been in this area for more than 40 years. We need this church to be the light in this community that this church was established to be. Amen. Our Willowbrook church faces similar challenges as the world church does. At uh, the general conference session, there was this statistic that caught me. The Seventh-day Adventist church is blessed to say that it now has a worldwide membership of almost 18 and a half million. Yes, amen which has grown 6.2 million members in the past five years. To be exact, 6,212,916. Five years, 6.2 million. But, and we do praise God for the growth, but at the same time, our church is now wrestling with the loss of, in five years, 3.7 million members. To be exact, 3,717,683 members since 2010. What's happening to us? That's almost a 60% loss in five years. It seems that part of the problem is that the members, for whatever reason, have lost a sense of participation and mission. Satan attacks us where we are most vulnerable. Whatever those attacks might be, Satan knows our weaknesses and tries to exploit them. But as a corporate fellowship with a combined vision, we can counteract those attacks with a strategy of commitment and to look for the grace of our God to give us the understanding. There's a second text that I'd like to bring, 2 Corinthians 12.9. And maybe we could read it together here. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Just before, after we said this, I was thinking there was another video. Good. God's unmerited favor for us, his crazy love. And the truth is, many times we struggle understanding it. If you find yourself struggling to understand God's grace, don't beat yourself up. Even the disciples struggled with understanding grace. Jesus said you, you're alive. I can't believe you're alive. Okay, I was in the boat and I wasn't catching any fish, okay? But I heard this voice and the voice said, cast your net to the other side. And so I'm thinking, I'm a fisherman. I know what I'm doing, but I'm not catching any fish. 
you know? And so I throw that net over there, and then a gaggle of fish pop into that net, and I'm going, this is a total miracle. Who could have done that? I need to know who told me to throw the net to the other side. And boom, I look up, and I mean, there is you. You're looking at me on the seashore going, it is I, the Lord. It's real life. I can't believe you're alive. This is awesome. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on. Peter. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. You're alive. This is so great. Good. Hey. Feed my sheep. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on, man. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? I love you. Yes. And I'm so sorry about that rooster cluck, and I had no idea what that meant, but I do know I'm better for it, all right? Okay. Then feed my sheep. Andrew, I'm smiling, but I'm serious. Come on, get out of the boat. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? Jesus. Mere words cannot describe the passion that I have for you. I love you. You know everything. I love you. Good. Good. Then feed my sheep. I didn't even know you had livestock. That is so like you, though. There's something new about you all the time. That's what I love about you. Peter, Yeah. do you remember uh, the morning the ladies went to the tomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in the upper room trying to figure out what to do next, you know, because we thought you were dead. You know, you were dead, you know. We're trying to figure all that out, you know. And Mary comes running up, and Mary's like saying, beehive, beehive, beehive. And I'm thinking, I'm allergic to bees. Like, keep them out. You know what I'm saying? But as she kept getting closer, I heard her correctly. She was saying, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And we're going, who's alive, who's alive? And she said, she was at the tomb, and the tomb was empty. And she said that the, there was an angel there. And the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay, he's risen. And so me and John, we hightailed it down there. And if John says he beat me, he's totally lying, all right? I beat him, FYI, all right, you know? And we get down there, and I'm looking at that tomb, and it is, it is empty. There's nothing in there, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And John is right there. John is so good with words. He should write a book. He is so good with words. And John said, don't you get it, Peter? This is everything Jesus said he was going to do. And you did it. And it's done. Let's go. This is so great. Wait. Yeah. The angel said what? Uh, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. You've risen. Let's go. This he is said what? Go tell the disciples and Peter. You said my name. Why did you say my name? Peter, that's grace. No, no, I don't, I don't deserve that because that night people kept coming up to me asking me if I belonged to you, if I was with you, and I kept denying you left and right, all right? No, it'll take me my whole life to make up for what I did. It was unforgivable for no, what I did. No, What I did on the cross was meant to take what is unforgivable and make it forgivable. That's my grace. It's not about you. It's always about me. That's grace, Peter. What can you say? Just like Peter, it took Christ to instill in him and go forth and tell others about Jesus' love. <laughs>